What's up YouTube? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today's video is all about how to lower your cost when it comes to flipping cars. Now I've been taking the time and reading your guys' uh, messages in the comment section below and a lot of people keep saying, oh well you have a dealership or you have a shop or you have this, that's where you're getting stuff cheap, I can't do this and a lot of that stuff is just complete BS. I'm going to tell you guys how to get set up, how to lower your cost, how to save different money, a few tricks that I use to help you guys save a little bit of money and build your business. So hopefully if you decide to get your dealer's license or if you just want to flip a few cars on the side every year, um, as long as your state allows it, then it'll give you the options to do that while building business credit, which I'm going to go into. Um, but before I get into that, if you could please do me a huge favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, if you uh, would consider smashing the uh, subscribe button as well, I post great content like this all the time, so please do. And without more shameless plugging, let's get into the video. Okay guys, I've been reading your comments and everything down below and I see a lot of people messaging me like, well, I don't own a shop or I don't own a dealership. I can't get parts that cheap, you know? Um, and I'm here to tell you guys that I started out just like everybody probably watching this video. I was flipping cars out of an apartment complex. I was literally pulling motors out of my driveway um, in the middle of the night so this way I wouldn't have to worry about my HOA seeing me during the daytime. So I totally understand. I'm going to give you guys a few tricks and tips on how to save money when it comes to car flipping when you're just getting started. The very first thing is go get your mobile mechanic license. Now a lot of people are going to probably look at this like, oh well I'm mechanically inclined, I love to work on cars, great. And there's going to be another half of you guys where well, I don't work on cars, I just want to sell cars, why does this benefit me? Well the very first thing, once you get your actual mobile mechanic license, you're going to get that from your city, county, however you set it up. Just go down there, do a sole proprietor. It's super easy. It's cheap. You don't have to get an LLC, none of that stuff. I would just get a basic license. Then you're going to go to Department of Taxation and they're going to give you a resale ID number or resale tax ID. Once you get these numbers, you're actually going to go to all your local vendors and set up an account. We're talking AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Pet Boys, Napa, CarQuest. The list goes on and on and on. I would recommend going all around your town, signing up with each of these vendors because you want to have as many accounts as you, you can because you don't know who's going to give you the best deal and who's going to give you the cheapest pricing. Now once you actually get your account set up, from day one, you're going to save on two things. You're going to save anywhere from 20 to 40% off retail prices when you purchase parts just from having that mold mechanic license. So something that could cost you as little as 50 bucks could save you, you know, $60 on a $150 water pump. That's huge. So just from there, you could save money right from day one. Plus you're saving money on sales tax. You know, you're running it off as your business expense. I definitely recommend at the end of the year you see a CPA so he could file it up for you. But just in basic starting off, just keep all your receipts, keep track of everything. And once we start this account and you get your mobile mechanics license, this is the best way to actually start your business because now you have to keep a paper trail. You get the basics of accounting. You get to work with businesses like O'Reilly's, AutoZone that are going to bill you probably daily. Once you build up a little more credit, they're probably going to say, okay, we're going to give you a $500 weekly account, which means that every week they'll give you up to $500 to spend. As you start to build your process of you flipping cars, you little by little build your credit inside the store. Eventually you could have a monthly account. Like our account is $30,000 a month with most of our vendors. So, you know, I didn't start this with my dealership. I started this all from my apartment complex flipping cars out of it. So, you know, you could do the exact same thing. And as you build your account, like I said, this is a long-term process. You could try it out. If you love flipping cars and you decide, you know what, I wanna open up a shop, you open up a shop. If you wanna open a body shop, you wanna open up a rental car company, or you wanna open up a dealership, this mobile mechanic license can be transferred to either one and all your accounts can be followed with it because you're showing credit history. And the best part is, is as you start to spend more money, you get more discounts. So what I do every few months is, let's say, you know, you just started out, you're flipping cars, you're doing really well, and you spent $5,000 this month at AutoZone. What you do is you go to AutoZone and you're like, hey AutoZone, I spent $5,000 on a bunch of parts this month. I want, instead of 20% discounts, can you give me a 22% or 25% discounts? 
Wait for them to say yes. And then you take that and then you take that over to O'Reilly's. Hey, O'Reilly's, AutoZone's giving me 25%. Can you give me 30%? If they say yes or, oh, we'll give you 26%, no problem. You take that and you go to Pet Boys and you go back and forth, back and forth till eventually you get low pricing on everything. And that's how when you're able to call, you can get a complete timing belt kit for $45 to $75. You know, you can get $300 power steering racks for, you know, half the price. You know, it's not that hard. It's not unbelievable. Everybody feels that, oh, it's it's impossible to get cheap pricing or, uh, you know, you have a racket on the market or something like that. This is just something very simple that you can literally do in one afternoon and start saving money tomorrow. And the best part is with your mold mechanic license, you can list that as a home business. So this way you don't have to rent any spaces. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to put up with fire marshals or none of this other crazy stuff. It's a home run business that you consider yourself a mold mechanic. So I definitely recommend that one. That is tip number one. Okay, tip number two is all about automotive rebuild companies. Now, you guys have probably heard me mention this a few times in most of my videos. Some of you guys may not know the term, but I'm gonna give you kind of a brief analogy and then talk about the actual companies and what they do. So back in the day, if your alternator was bad, you didn't you know, take your alternator and buy a new one. You would go down to the parts store and you would say, hey, my alternator is not charging. Can I get an alternator rebuild kit? They would sell you a little box with a bunch of little parts in there, brushes, resistors, some bearings for your alternator. You would take it back home, you would rebuild it, and you would use your old housing from your alternator, and voila, you're good to go. And it would only cost you just a few bucks. Nowadays, we're in the throwaway culture. America is so used to throwing everything away, we basically send all of our cores back to Mexico, they rebuild them, send it back up here, and we pay full price. So automotive rebuild companies are still keeping that tradition alive where they're rebuilding all these parts, and it saves you a massive amount of money. So, you know, we were just talking about alternators. You could have a bad resistor on the back of your alternator. Your alternator is 100% fine, everything's working good, but the resistor on the back is maybe overcharging the battery or undercharging it. The resistor can't regulate the power. Well, you could take it into one of these stores and they can actually replace just that one part, maybe charge you $35, and you save $200 on an expensive alternator. Um, I brought in a power steering pump. The, the actual pulley, it broke. It just started missing some of the ribs uh, on the actual belt, and it kept throwing the belt off. You know, I went down to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, everything else. Nobody sold the pulley for this particular pump, and it was over five years old, so the dealer no longer kept it in there. They all wanted to sell me a $300 power steering pump. I went down to my local automotive rebuild shop, said, hey, can you guys rebuild this, or do you have an old one on there? They said, no problem, we can order a wheel, a uh, pulley, excuse me. They replaced the pulley, charged me $25, saved me over 200 and what, like $80, you know, in, in costs. Power steering racks, AC components, things of that nature, they can rebuild. And a lot of times, you know, I've seen a lot of people where they'll get rid of cars because, you know, you get a bad AC compressor, alternator, starter, some of these other things, you know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars, especially on European vehicles. You know, these guys can rebuild, rebuild them for hundreds of dollars less. And the best part is most of these really big automotive rebuild companies have the parts in stock. So the one that I use locally here is ARE, shout out to them if they're watching. Um, there's a great guy named Boris that runs the whole store. And so sometimes I'll call and be like, hey Boris, I need a power steering rack for a 2015 uh, Nissan Altima. A lot of times he'll say, hey, you know what? Lucky, I gotta rebuild that one. I'll need it for about an hour. I'll take it out. I take the thing down to there. If he has to rebuild the whole rack, hey, it's 150 bucks or whatever else. But if he calls me back and says, hey, it's just leaking out of the end seals. We replace the end seals. We're only gonna charge you 50 bucks. I save, you know, another $100. There's a lot of ways you could save money. But the best part is, is you never know until you call. And once we call them, sometimes they actually have that part on the stock, on the actual shelf. Hey, you know what? Um, bring me your rack and I'll exchange it out for one of ours. So then I'll just bring the part down, they'll exchange it for another one they just rebuilt that they had in stock. I get the new part, I leave really quickly. They take my old part, they rebuild it, they put it back on the shelf for the next person to come down the lane. So automotive rebuild companies are a great way to save a lot of money. 
that whether you're doing this as maybe a job as flipping cars or if you're a mechanic and you want to save a little bit of money because you know everybody always loves to double check a mechanic so if they start saying well i went AutoZone, i went to o'reilly's and my ac compressor is four hundred dollars you call up these rebuild, rebuild companies and say, how much is it for a rebuilt AC compressor? Oh yeah, if you bring it down and only costs you, you know, 150 bucks to rebuild it, take it down there, have them rebuild it, replace the seals, bring it back, put it back in there. Most of them give anywhere from a one to three year warranty. The same thing as what you're gonna get on a used one. The customer's happy, you save money, you could pocket the difference, and you know you, you basically build more rapport with another vendor. So that's, like I said, one of the great ways to save money. Now the next tip is something that I've talked about numerous times on my channel is I always recommend getting three to four vendors for everything. So the next one we're going to talk about is bodywork guys. Now you've heard me when I was painting the focus on the video on how to flip cars that I did with another YouTuber. Um, you know, they're like, wow, it was only 350 bucks to paint the whole front end. I could never get it this cheap. I can never do it that cheap. You can. All you got to do is try different people out. You know, I had a guy that would charge me $800 for that exact same bodywork, but I didn't stop when he gave me the $800 bid. I kept calling other people, saying what's up, because you never know who maybe have a lower cost of operating. Maybe some guy has extra paint left over, or maybe he gets cheaper materials, or he doesn't pay his labor as much. So there's different ways to save money, but you're never going to know that unless you shop multiple people. And even if they give me a good price, I still shop the deal. After he gives me a bid, I go to the next person. I go to the next person. Even after months of doing business with these guys, I still look for another vendor. You guys can get people that will do your body work for a good price, do good work, and constantly be checking up on them. It's a good thing because you never want to rely on one person. I did that years ago when I first started my shop. I met a body guy that was really hungry for business. He's like, Lucky, I'll do everything for $100 a panel. Now, what I mean by $100 a panel, when you do body work, they price it out like a fender is a panel, a bumper is a panel, doors, you know, everything else hood, they break it down into that. So it was really simple math. So I'm like, okay, well, I need to paint the bumper and fender, you know, and then I need to blend the hood. So there's 100, 150, so that's 250 bucks. Simple for me to do the math. Then I would go tell my customer, hey, Mr. Customer, it's gonna be 350. So the body shop guy makes 250, I make $100 off the deal, everybody's happy. Well, I got so busy and I was feeding him so much work that one day he just disappeared. Don't know why. People in the automotive industry will tell you this. A lot of people in our industry are flaky people. They will disappear. They will get drunk, high, whatever else, go on a gambling binge, smoke meth, run off to Vegas, you know, do all kinds of crazy stuff and you don't know. So you never rely on just one vendor. So my recommendation to you is you can get the same pricing that I do. You just take your time, build a rapport, and you know, and you got to spoon feed them a little bit of work. A lot of people in the beginning will not give you a smoking deal if you don't give them at least maybe one to two cars. You know, if you say, hey, paint this bumper and give me a ch super cheap deal, but he only sees you have one car, you may not get the best pricing. But if you have two, three cars, sacrifice that little bit of money and say, hey, you know what? I'll tell you what, if you paint this bumper and you paint this bumper, I'll do it for X amount of dollars and see if you can get the, uh, the vendor to actually do that. And once it gets back, check out the work, see how it is. If you like the work, you can use that guy again, but also keep looking for another guy. Like I said, constantly be looking for multiple vendors for different things when it comes to body work. It's very important. Okay, the next vendor we're gonna talk about are mobile mechanics. Now, even if you're a little bit mechanically savvy and you fix your own cars as you're flipping them, I definitely recommend you find at least one good solid mobile mechanic because they're gonna run into some cars where maybe you need specialty tools or you may not know what to do or you maybe just need a little bit of guidance. That's why you always build a relationship with a mobile mechanic. Now, a lot of you guys are like, well, I don't wanna pay these guys. You know, I'd rather just get somebody and hire them and keep them in house. In the beginning, if you don't have a dealership and you don't have a shop, you can't afford to just keep somebody on payroll. It's cheaper just to get something like this. Here's a good example of why you want a good mobile mechanic, even if you are mechanically savvy and you can technically do the work yourself. So 
I remember I was walking out of Smith's, I just went grocery shopping, and I saw a gentleman next to me uh, that parked his car next to me, had his hood open. So I asked him, hey, are you having car problems? Do you need a jump? He's like, no, he goes, my car is making this really weird noise. We turned the motor over and there was no compression. I'm like, oh, it sounds like your timing belt, you know, either broke or jumped. So we opened up the hood, we pulled the plastic cover off and we saw that his actual tensioner broke and the belt was off the actual timing belt. And I told the guy, I was like, hey man, you know, your timing belt jumped, you know, you're gonna have to fix it. And the guy's like, you know what, this is it. I've had it with this car, I don't wanna mess with it anymore. He's like, I'm just, I'm done with it. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna call my tow guy. At this time, I didn't have a tow truck. I'm gonna tow this car from here back to my place so this way I can start working on it in my shop. At the time, my tow guy was like, hey, if you want me to do it, I'm gonna tow it. It's gonna be 150 bucks. I was like, wow, 150 bucks, really? You can't give me a deal, 50 bucks, something like that? He's like, no, that's what it is. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. You know. So I called up my friend that was a mold mechanic. And I was like, hey, um, it's, a, uh, it's a Honda Civic. This is the problem with the car, the time belt you know, broke. How much would you charge to put it in? And he's like, oh, dude, he goes, I can be in and out of there in an hour, maybe hour and a half tops. He's like, give me a hundred bucks and I'll do it. I was like, sure. I went to O'Reilly's that was down the street, brought the parts, left it in the car, told him the key was underneath the mat. He went over there, got it up, fired it up, said, okay, the car is running, good to go. I had my friend drop me off and I drove it home. So it's always good to have a mobile mechanic because you never know when you're gonna need them. And it's always good to have a little bit of expertise on standby. Okay, my next tip is all about towing or moving a vehicle. Now you heard me mention this in the past story that I just talked about. Having a tow guy is critically important. It's very hard to find somebody that's very stable, but you can find them. So for my personal tows, I usually spend about 50 bucks. Now I have a tow truck, so I don't really do it that often, but I still have at least one to two guys as a backup that cost me $50. You wanna have at least one or two tow guys because you're gonna run into situations where you need to get the car out of wherever it's at. I've bought in cars in the middle of the night. I've bought in cars you know, in some really bad areas where you just you really don't wanna leave your car there, take a chance. Also, you may have an issue with maybe your house, your HOA. Maybe somebody comes over there, rats you out, and now you have to move your cars because you're flipping cars in your driveway and somebody turns you in. But if you wanna do this for a real like job and you wanna get really serious about it, you know, as I started kind of doing this right after high school, I actually went and bought a tow dolly with a actual electric um, um, winch from Harbor Freight. The dolly costed me, I think it was like $500 brand new. The winch was like a hundred bucks and it plugged right into my tow hitch, ran off the power for my car and you literally just grabbed any car, put it in neutral, dragged it up on the dolly, put the straps on it, drove away. So if you can't afford a tow truck, I would recommend buying a tow dolly or buying a actual flatbed trailer. These things will save you a lot of money when it comes to buying cars that have some minor issues, especially when you have to move them. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've bought in cars for cheap with a broken axle. A broken axle is not that big of a repair, but once the axle is broken and it's actually severed from the other part, if you put it in drive, the transmission will not let you go forward. A lot of people think that the transmission is bad when all reality, it's just an axle. Get your dolly, go over there, tow that thing out of the way. You can literally make a habit of it. Just picking up cars for 150 bucks, dragging them out of there. That's another good business where you could actually, if you have a truck and you have a tow dolly, talk to your local junkyards and see what they offer you. At one time, this was probably about five years ago, metal was actually at a pretty decent price. So we used to get $500 for any truck, SUV or van, and we used to get $400 for any full-size car. So we were going around buying cars for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and driving them straight to the junkyard and selling them for 400, 500, things like that. So, you know, check your local area, see if your vendors do that. If you do, put out an ad, hey, I buy junk cars, as long as you have a title. You know, give me X amount of dollars for it, you know? There's companies out there too that buy catalytic converters. That's another big saver where if you have a flatbed truck or a tow dolly, tow that car over there, cut off the catalytic converters, sell those things for $150, $200 a pop, scrap the car for $200, you just made 300 bucks on the whole thing. You can recycle the radiator, 
You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Machine shops, they buy used motors and transmissions. So you can also pull those things out and sell those as well. So there's a few different ways you can have that option to make that extra money, but it only works if one, you have a good tow guy, two, you have a dolly, or three, you have an actual flatbed trailer that you're using. So I recommend if you're getting serious about flipping cars and you wanna kinda of grow your uh, business to the next level, get one of those three things, it'll definitely help you out. Okay guys, this is the last tip of the day and you're gonna love this one because this is my best tip yet, is getting cars fixed for free. Now, I started learning about recalls and warranty issues and what's called TSB, which is Technical Service Bulletin. If you have any mechanic friends that work at dealerships, you need to literally go be buddy buddy with them and ask them what are the common cars with the problems, what are these issues, blah, blah, blah. What I mean by this is I used to go out and purposely buy Hondas and Kias with bad motors or transmissions as long as they were under 90,000 miles. I would see them all the time, people wouldn't take care of them, I would buy them, literally take them to my friend at Hyundai, hey, it's still under the 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, and I would get them fixed. I would do the same thing on Focuses. A lot of the Focuses that have the bad CVT transmission are actually under warranty or under programming recall. If they can't program it and repair it, then they'll actually replace the transmission. It's gotta be in a certain year range, it's gotta be in a certain build date, and it's gotta be under certain miles. But as you start to learn these things, you can actually buy cars off of Craigslist with these particular problems and get them fixed. I remember several years ago when the 5.7 Hemis were all over the place and all these Chrysler 300s and Dodge Magnums were blown up everywhere. We found a recall where they had an issue with the valve seats falling out, hitting the uh, piston and blowing the motors up. Well, we were buying these things left and right from uh, everybody on Craigslist and we'd drive them straight down to the Dodge dealership, brand new motor. We'd clean them up, put them up for sale. Just kept doing it over and over and over again. So this is one of those tips where I tell everybody that everybody sleeps on, nobody knows about this stuff. You gotta do the research, you gotta find out, but definitely look into warranties and TSBs and recalls. Because like I said, there's a lot of things that are covered that people don't know about. And if you could take advantage of that, please do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, please smash the like button. I truly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Also, if you can subscribe, I post, like I said, crazy stuff like this all the time. And if you can, please follow us on Instagram, automotive.life, and we'll see you next video.